Hello, Maria Teplova here, and today we're going to be trying out different American comic styles. When we think of American comics, usually the first thing that comes up is superheroes, like in Marvel or DC. Most superhero comics place a lot of emphasis on the muscles, and actually exaggerate them quite a bit. For the face, features like eyes, nose, and mouth are usually pretty small, but the jaw, on the other hand, is large and square. However, this is definitely not the only style in American comics. There are comics just as iconic and popular that have a much more cartoonish and exaggerated style. These comics are usually meant to be more lighthearted and funny. Today you're going to be choosing a famous painting or a photograph to recreate in a comic style of your choice. In your reference, you at least want to include the face and hands because these are two parts of the body that can be stylized the most. For my first example, I'm going to be recreating this painting of Napoleon in the style of these vintage Superman comics. Since the style is pretty realistic, I'm just going to be mapping out the composition as accurate as I can to the painting. It's going to look pretty similar, but I'll be changing the details in the face, muscles, and maybe the cape to look like it's from a superhero comic. I'll also be removing details on things like his clothing or the horse because older superhero comics didn't actually include that much detail in everything and a lot of it was pretty flat. I'm starting just on a piece of sketching paper and I'll be transferring it to a smooth piece of bristol paper after. Like any other drawing you'd make, remember to start with the general shapes and add more detail as you go. Now that I have all the important parts mapped out, I'm going to be looking back and forth between the painting reference and also a bunch of pictures of old Superman comics. I'm doing this in order to replicate the way they drew the muscles and anatomy. While looking at the references of old comics, I noted how they drew Superman's feet and also which muscles they chose to define, and then I put that into my drawing to try to accurately represent the style. You want to put extra care into drawing the face because the way a character's face is drawn is usually the most iconic part of any comic book style. For Superman, I made the jaw really large and defined, but I kept the facial features really small and also added some shadow for his cheekbones. I also made both of his fists clenched, even though it wasn't like that in the painting, because I feel like it suits the superhero's pose better. In comic illustration, you can also put down pencil marks where you're going to be shading later, which is what you can see me doing on the hat. After I finish sketching all the details and I'm satisfied with it, I'm going to be transferring it onto a piece of bristol paper. You transfer by putting a layer of graphite on the back side and make sure it covers all of the area where the drawing is on the front. And try to make this layer as even as you can and a little bit dark. Then you're going to put your sketch on top of the paper you want to transfer it onto with the sketch facing up and trace over all your lines with a pointed pencil. The sharper the pencil, the better. Doing this will leave an imprint of the graphite onto the bristol paper. It also might be helpful to tape at least one corner onto the other paper so that it doesn't move around. You can see the graphite imprint on the bristol paper, but because it's pretty light, you might want to go over it with your pencil again, at least some areas. Now when I'm inking it, I'm going to start with a pretty thin ink pen and I'm going to go over all the lines. When lining comics, artists use varying line weight or line thickness to make the line work more interesting and it also can be used to add shadow in a lot of places. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be lining everything with a really thin pen but I'll go back with a brush pen and add some varying line weight to specific places that I either want to emphasize or I want to add shadow to. A pen with a brush tip isn't actually necessary, but it's probably much easier. You can still absolutely mimic the brush lines with your thin pen. In fact, if you have a thin brush and black ink, you can use that to line your art as well. So now I'm using a brush tipped black pen to go over some of my line work and make it thinner and more dynamic. Like I said before, thicker lines are used to emphasize things and also add shadow sometimes both at the same time. I'm placing thicker lines where I want to emphasize the muscles 
and also around him, but even heavier under his leg and foot to mimic some slight shadow. Look at the references for the comic style you chose to see how they did their line work and how they shaded. Though I'm trying to mimic old superhero comics, the line work that you want to be doing may look completely different. But a lot of comic artists utilize this strategy with lining, so it may not look that different after all. I'm not going to be doing this kind of shading all over, but I am doing it in parts of his outfit that I want to emphasize and that are also black but highly reflective. I added some thicker lines to the horse as well because if I only did it on Napoleon, then they wouldn't look like they go together. Also remember to erase whatever pencil lines you will have underneath. For my second example, I'm going to be doing the same painting, but I'm going to try to make it in the style of Garfield. This comic is much more stylized and not really that realistic, so I'm not following the proportions of the actual painting that closely and instead trying to use my imagination to imagine what it would look like in that style. It'll make your life a lot easier if you're looking at a large number of references for your comic style and using different pictures that incorporate different parts of your drawing in them. For example, how to draw a horse head in the style or how to draw the hands in that style or a face. You can put a lot of expression into a character's face and hands, so put extra care into that. I didn't show it on camera a second time, but once I finished with my sketch, I transferred it and lined it like I did before. And this is the final result. Now it's your turn.